Hey, this is Arnav from Scalar. Uh, welcome to another episode of Refactor. And today I will discuss about uh, mobile development tech stacks like uh, native development versus Flutter versus React Native. Because this is a question that a lot of people ask that, you know, if I start mobile development today, which is a tech stack I should pick because there are three very different looking tech stacks in front of me. So I will uh, cover this uh, from both the angles, uh, like what do these tech stacks look like, where they are more appropriately used. And then I will also talk about what is the um, industry uh, looking like, you know, which tech stacks people are mostly hiring for, right? So first of all, you know, looking at where these tech stacks are getting used a lot uh, and also how to learn them. So native development, when people are talking about, generally mean that creating apps using the default SDKs that are available from Google for Android development and from Apple for iOS development, which uh, back in the day meant writing apps for Android in Java and writing apps for iOS in Objective-C. But nowadays, almost all new apps are written in Kotlin for Android and in Swift for iOS. Swift and Objective-C code is compatible with each other. You can write an app with some old code in Objective-C while you're writing new code in Swift. And the same is the case for Android development where you can work on an app where some of the older code is written still in Java while you can create the newer parts of it in Kotlin. One thing to be understood here is that still today in the industry, if you want to make a name for yourself as a native developer in the Android world, not knowing Java and only knowing Kotlin is not possible because the Kotlin code that you write would still run in essentially in a way how it runs on uh, JVM, the Java runtime environment of the Java virtual machine. In Android, there is actually a different runtime called ART, Android runtime, but nevertheless, it's very similar to the JVM and how it operates. So you would be using a lot of classical Java things like how, let's say, an array list in a Java works or how a linked list in a Java works, these kind of things and how a collection framework of Java works. You would still be working a lot with those things when you're working on Android there. Similarly, if you work on iOS, while it's 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 almost 100% Swift world today, knowing a bit of Objective-C is still useful because if you work at a company where there is a code base which is 10 years old, there's gonna be old code in Objective-C which you have to still understand. So that's about this world. Now about languages that are being used in, let's say, uh, Flutter is a new, or I would rather first start with React Native. So React Native is something that Facebook designed so that they can reduce the time as well as the effort, as well as the number of people required to build two different apps for iOS and Android. And they say that, okay, how about we write the logical parts um, in a common language like JavaScript? How about we use a framework like React, which front-end engineers already know? And we will translate that into actual uh, Java-like code for Android and Objective-C like code for iOS. And that's how React Native was built. Now, uh, when you work on React Native, what happens is obviously it's easier for um, front-end engineers who have worked with React to actually write code, uh, thinking of this more like web development sort of an environment. But as your app grows more and more complex, you still do have to understand how the Java Kotlin parts in Android works, how the Objective-C Swift parts work in iOS, because the UI that is being made is, is still using things like, you know, views and XML in Android, just wrapped around with some JavaScript layer. And now it's still using, you know, things like uh, delegates and view controllers and view delegates, all of that app delegates, it's still using that. Flutter, which is sort of the uh, newest largely used framework, I mean, there are lots of frameworks to do this, but the reason we are talking about only these three are because these are the only three which have really gone mainstream. And among the mainstream, the newest one is actually um, Flutter, which was developed by Google. Again, with a similar mindset that how about we write apps once and we it can run on iOS and Android both. While the approach is a little different there, it does not try to translate your Flutter code into Java uh, and views for Android, or it does not try to convert your code into Objective-C and app delegates and view controllers in uh, iOS. It does not do that. So what it does is instead actually directly render the graphics. So basically Flutter is very similar to how game engines are developed like Unity and Unreal Engine, where the code that you write actually generates actual pixel-based assets, like it generates a real button, it does not use Android's button, but it generates its own button and renders it on the screen. So Flutter is more independent of 
how the uh, Android SDK or how the iOS SDK works, right? But still, if you want to use things like hardware sensors and GPS and operate the camera, you still need to work through the Android SDK and the iOS SDK in that case. Just clearing out the basic technical differences between them. Now, where are these being used? So if you find any very old app, an app which has been you know, on users' phones and on the Play Store and App Store for 10 years, 12 years, you know, if you if you pick any app, like, like apps from Microsoft, Google, Facebook, which have been some of the first few apps that were released, these apps would largely be like, at least maybe the entire app or 80-90% of it is still developed using native technologies, which is using the Android SDK and Java and Kotlin for Android, using iOS SDKs and Objective-C and Swift for iOS. These companies also have uh, fairly old and well-established teams inside the companies, which if they hire an engineer who does not know Android development well, they can actually teach them, they can up-ramp them. And then, uh, so it's not that difficult uh, for them. If you look at uh, some companies which have more started out five to six years back, seven years back, uh, you would start seeing a lot of companies which did start out with React Native at that stage because React started getting very popular and 2016-17 was the time when it got also stable enough for people to actually start uh, using it, right? There are also stories of companies which started off with React Native and uh, the reason they did was because it was easier to hire people with React knowledge and teach them the mobile parts and work on a React Native app rather than hire Android and iOS engineers uh, separately. Once these companies reached to a certain scale, once these apps went beyond a certain level of complexity, they ended up uh, rewriting those apps using the native frameworks, which the most famous story of that is of Airbnb, which was one of the most popular apps written in uh, React Native, but they wrote a series of posts on Medium articulating why they left React Native and started working on native technologies. And finally, coming to Flutter, companies which have actually started making apps in the last two to three years, especially the last uh, one year, I would say, is, is where you would find a lot of startups beginning to make apps uh, in Flutter. Uh, that is not to say large companies are not. For example, Google Pay's app has been made entirely in Flutter, and it's one of the biggest apps made in Flutter as an example. And it was sort of a a test bed for Google to showcase to the world that, hey, look, Google Pay, one of the biggest apps that we make, we are making it in Flutter, so you guys can also make. The Google Analytics mobile dashboard is also made using Flutter. Flutter has a lot of ambitions, like if you write code in Flutter, it might work as a desktop app, it might work as a web app as well. Those parts are not actually very polished uh, today. So in reality, actual production uh, level projects in Flutter, you can only make for Android and iOS. You can't really make for web yet. But that said, it's, it's fairly promising because uh, in Flutter, the promise is that you don't have to understand how the Flutter code integrates with the native code. You write code that actually generates UI that works exactly like pixel to pixel, exactly same on Android and iOS, which is uh, a very good promise, of course. Uh, Flutter does use a language which is not very popular, by the way, which is Dart. But Dart is uh, very similar to both Java and JavaScript type languages. So if you've worked with either Java or you've worked with JavaScript, or especially TypeScript, you would find Dart to be a language which is extremely familiar to you, which makes it easy for a lot of people to pick it up as well. There is another space where Flutter gets used a lot, which is in agencies and boutique app studios. So there are a lot of companies which say that, hey, okay, maybe you are not a tech business. You maybe run a restaurant. You want an app built? Okay, pay us some money. We have a couple of engineers. We'll build an app for you. These are small uh, app development agencies or app studios. And then, you know, by the way, these are great companies to work for as well because they focus on the engineering while, uh, you know, taking up clients. And then these are not large-scale service companies where the work is boring. They are more smaller companies where they pick up very bespoke projects. These kind of companies have actually been using Flutter a lot because they are able to develop an entire app for a client uh, with one or two developers only without having separate expertise in Android and iOS. So that's what the world looks like today. The uh, number of, I would say, openings in terms of jobs and uh, the number of opportunities in native development uh, like Android and iOS is something there has been a very uh, interesting trend there where uh, I would say the median salaries and all have been going up because 
more senior engineers are needed there. But the number of opportunities at an entry level where SD ones are hired has been going down because a lot of places where new startups are starting to build projects and are hiring new engineers, they are rather doing it in Flutter. So that little you know change is there. And most people I know who are experienced native mobile developers on Android and iOS, they have been looking to switch jobs into larger companies because that's where they feel these skills should be more valued. Maybe uh, we will see that native mobile development will have a similar cycle as to what happened with desktop apps. So there is obviously the art of building very complex Windows apps using C Sharp or uh, building Linux and uh, Mac OS uh, apps using C++ or Objective-C is an art that you know you don't see people just getting out of college or a development bootcamp thinking that hey my goal in life is to learn how to make desktop apps but that does not mean desktop apps are not getting made a lot of your very important everyday apps that you use from vlc media player to the browser that you use to uh, microsoft's apps like uh, word excel etc these all apps are actually native desktop apps and the entire Adobe stack of all the creative tools that we have from Premiere Pro to Photoshop, these are all native apps developed for the desktop. And these skills are fairly high in demand because if you look at the teams which are building these desktop apps, they are full of very senior engineers being paid a lot of money. But junior level roles for desktop development is not as big as, let's say, front end roles or mobile roles or web development uh, roles, right? So that's sort of what the market looks like. Uh, we'll only have to wait and watch and see where it goes. So if you are a mobile developer, uh, hopefully this video helped uh, clear some doubts, gave you some idea as to where the industry is going towards. Please uh, like and share this video with your friends if this would be useful for them. And do subscribe to our channel to keep getting videos like this. Thank you so much.